scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I see a plane flying over you. Stand up. What is this that I see? The Lord is showing me a plane flying over you. And I'm seeing writings on tables. What do you do? You are writing. I'm seeing you writing on table and I'm seeing planes flying. God is opening doors of international. It will happen. You will have, God will open your walks because I'm seeing you writing on a table. The Lord is, and I'm seeing planes flying over you. The Lord will take you far beyond. You believe that? Hold my hands. Let me pray for you. Let your writing step into a new dimension. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sometimes I don't know why God just flows like this. You really cannot predict what it is that. Hallelujah. He can do impartations, can bless. Can... It really doesn't matter what it is. Your job is to be expectant and open. Hallelujah. When you come for koinonia we can be talking about how to enter a relationship and the holy spirit is setting men on fire this is this is not your church this is a strange place that we do not even know what to call it that's why we call it koinonia koinonia is not the name koinonia is a, a description an attempt to give a caption of what the holy spirit does to people hallelujah i welcome you and we thank God for what he's doing. Many of you may not know why all these impartations and these things happen. Hallelujah. Even if you do not understand, just give thanks because God is certainly not wasting his time. Hallelujah. One by one by one by one, you see him blessing people, touching people. Hallelujah. And sometimes the Lord opens my eyes and I see the angels of the Lord. And I see them directing me towards certain things. That's why sometimes we do all these stupid and crazy things that we do on stage. Doesn't make sense. Breaks every rule of Bible college and ministry ethics. But it works. And that's what people want. Results, not stories, not noise. People are tired of jargons. The Bible says, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of men's speech. But in the demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith your faith will not be grounded upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of god don't make your church or your fellowship when you become pastors and leaders don't let your congregations be places where the devil just comes and rides in and out freely because you are looking for money and eating food and running with no discernment let it be a place of fire hallelujah lord we give you praise we thank you for your grace hallelujah now we've been considering a series on family life you will be so blessed tonight in the name of jesus i hope you're writing something now when it comes to the subject of relationship and family life it's very very broad 
um, it really cannot be exhausted because you are dealing with human beings here. Hallelujah. You are not dealing subjects about faith and so on and so forth. You can exhaustively discuss them, but when it comes to issues of relationship and family life, it's very broad. Every, every family is a peculiar case on its own. Hallelujah. So it's very difficult to be able to encapsulate a principle that works as it were 100 percent and the only hope we have for that is the word of god opinions of men suggestions from counselors can only go so far there are many geographical differences and so on and so forth so because of all of these things um our focus please understand this our focus on the relationship and family life series is to cover number one the principles of entering a relationship that's the first aspect pastor jake started it and then i was able to touch that last week just to guide us on the preparation and the process of entering a relationship a godly relationship then number two and that's what we'll be discussing today maintaining your relationship whether marriage or marriage slash relationship you can write it we'll be sharing some principles and then generally principles for successful marriage like i said we can only touch so far and we'll pray we have a goal in the family life series to be able to guide us and we have discovered that these are the major areas hallelujah our congregation is predominantly made up of young people and so we have to focus our teachings um, so we spoke about the preparation and the principles the process of entering a relationship you can get the teachings they are free please make sure you get it if you don't get it you may have a hard time trying to follow up with us now I had so many text messages from ladies this week hallelujah so many questions you cannot imagine hallelujah some of you were writing questions that i know is you sir what if there's somebody you just know that they're talking about themselves they want to use third party eventually you forget that you are using third party communication and then you say what if there are some there's somebody and then the brother tells you you just know that they are narrate why don't you tell me this is my problem and this and that hmm? one lady sent a text and says sir you have to talk about this thing today i mean she like three or four pages and she really wanted it by god's grace we'll talk about some of these things i appreciate only one guy only one guy sent me a text hallelujah only one guy ladies god bless you don't keep quiet until you find the right answers it's better to talk than to act foolishly is that correct ask your questions don't keep quiet about it until you are absolutely satisfied there's a saying in house that the person who is always inquiring about the road will not be missing but the one who says i know the road then when it backfires you begin to blame people okay so we're going to be talking about something very interesting now there are two books that i would recommend and most of our teachings will come from some of those books number one gary chapman five love languages don't say ah, i've read it just keep quiet don't let don't even start this night keep quiet and listen number two Love and Respect, Dr. Emerson Egrich. Powerful books. They are believers. They love God. They are very, very serious with God. Time-tested principles. They've been into marriage counseling and relationships using biblical perspectives for more than three decades. And so we'll be teaching around this. And of course, the greatest of all is the Word of God. Hallelujah. Okay, so two scriptures before we start off tonight. Once again, turn, laugh with your neighbor, give him a hug, a shake. Do it quickly. 
Tell him I wish you good luck in today's ride. Doesn't matter how the the plane goes, be sure we will land. We must land before the grace. Hallelujah. First Peter 3, verse 7. First Peter 3, 7. While I was preparing this note, I was laughing. I was already imagining some of you. You know, one day, I, I, am I? Sometimes I feel like I'm a clown on stage. When I'm trying to be serious, some of you are really laughing. Likewise, ye husbands. Don't say I'm not married. You will be married. So listen. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them who the wives okay if you read the preceding verses dwell with them according to all the brothers read it one two read likewise who are the husbands likewise us we men we will dwell with them according to so the bible says you live with a woman according to it didn't say according to love are you following me now Look, when it comes to women, you, owe, you can coexist according to... How many of you have roommates that you love, but you know next session, you are certainly not going to stay together? Do you hate them? But there is no knowledge. No wonder it's ladies that are raising their hands. The brothers can manage, the ladies cannot take it again. Because it takes knowledge to dwell with a woman. Ladies can be as complicated as laptops. I was thinking of what to say. My mind was booting. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I want to talk about a few... Listen, please. What I want to talk about right now is very important. Please. If you are sleeping now, it's the time to wake up. Listen very carefully with your eyes, your spirit, your mind, whatever you can use to listen. I want to talk about something. Everybody write, emotional obsession. Very interesting word. We are going to discuss it. Emotional obsession. We are talking of maintaining your relationship now or maintaining your marriage. Look up please. 90% of relationships, including Christian relationships, 90% of believers enter relationships among other reasons because of what I call emotional obsession you know what an emotional obsession is an emotional obsession is that that feeling huh brother that is like how do I describe it now songs of Solomon says love is stronger than death that's the kind of feeling where out of your whole 24 hours the best is the five minutes you were able to speak with the sister so two guys one brother one lady quick ella come and stand quickly Ooh. abel appreciate them quickly please come and stand my brother stand so abel Elijah, sorry, it doesn't matter. I'm, you, uh, it's an example. Am I calling him Elijah? Oh, yeah. Now, Elijah has been attending Koinonia. He knows that she's in prayer band. And now, Elijah is praying. Elijah is before him. Elijah cannot sleep. You wake up by three and you're just sitting down. Elijah, what is wrong? He said, Truly, me too. I don't know. You call every one of your roommates Ella. Sorry, um, Ella, Sam. Sorry, this, this is called. It's not wrong. Are you listening to me? It's not wrong. 
emotional obsession. Or she, she, she wakes up by 3 o'clock in the night and picks her biro and on her pillow she's now drawing flowers. People are sleeping. There's no light. You are using your phone. Drawing flowers. Oh, we know it. Oh. We don't need to come to your hostel to know it. Then you draw a hand. Elijah's hand. Collecting the flower. And that's that drive. You come for fellowship. You are sweating. You've not seen Ella. Ah, Sam is, you are covering my view, Sam. You are just looking at Ella. If peradventure you see Elijah, you come early, but you sit down outside. You are waiting until the arrival of Ella. And then you start laughing. That's when your, your praise and worship becomes living, active, full of life, full of power. They say, greet your neighbor. You've not greeted the people around you. You've gone, Ella, how are you? Even you can't help it. You can't, it's a fuel that you cannot quench. Hallelujah. Now, listen. And this is most for ladies because, you see, it takes a long time for ladies to arrive there. Guys get that easily. As easy as it comes, it just goes. You are in a dinner and you look at Ella and you're like, Hey, God, talk to me or I'll talk to you. Talk to me or I'll talk. Somebody must talk to somebody this night. Hallelujah. Then one morning you are passing and you just see the lady in the morning. And she just back her hair anyhow. And you're like, ah, God, please don't say anything. Is this the lady? I so that this emotional obsession is very impulsive in guys. It takes a while for it to crystallize in ladies. But when it catches them. Hallelujah. I'm sure they know themselves. That's why they run away the moment they start seeing any guy. Because they know what can happen. It's like super glue. You will sit down there when he catches you. Free bus transport. Going on, uh, after, after the grace, go. You will trek. Not because you, there was no space in the bus. You were waiting. Has she gone? Ross. And the guy, there's always a witness helping you and encouraging you. So, yeah, you just do as if he's looking at the protocol. And he's just looking and he comes, he's around, yeah, yeah, go down. Emotional obsession. Now, this is powerful because it's really the distinguishing factor, it's what helps you listen. See, look at two guys shaking themselves. I saw two of you. I saw you. And I congratulate you for shaking yourselves. I wish you a safe ride, safe journey. We'll be ready to help you wherever. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, please understand. This emotional obsession is very powerful because that's what can make a brother to use his money for lunch and buy a recharge card and be patient. Sleep is drowsing his eyes, but he's praying, waiting for five minutes past 12. The guy is just strolling. His roommates are starving. They bought Gary. He kept his own money. It's called obsession. Where the energy came from? You were not fasting, but you've not eaten. Yet you are not bothered. You are not bothered. Five minutes past 12, your eyes will just clear. You just start flashing. Hoping that the lady will flash back. Once the lady flashes back, whether MTN, whether there's network or no network, if there is only one spot near your room, even if it's a window, you stand like this. You can stand. Later, you find out, ah, five minutes to four. You are just hissing. This thing is entering you. Yeah, coming out here is called obsession. At least, since it does not happen for every lady or every guy, it helps you to be able to narrow down your decision and it helps you know that you are making a good decision. Are you following me? But the trouble is this most guys or most ladies, really, that's why about 90% of ladies enter a relationship. And two weeks later, they feel like going out. You know why? Because emotional obsession cannot be the fuel for your relationship. Are you following me now? Let me tell you something. Every relationship, including 
between you and Jesus Christ, every kind of relationship at a point must take faith and a factor other than just your emotions to sustain it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Now, hold on. Two of you are going out. Let's assume it has worked for you now. Finally, it doesn't matter what happened in between. The long and short is now this has worked. They are going out. Suddenly, this brother now starts reducing his time from one, one hour, 45 minutes, 15 minutes, and he just stops at the 10 minutes mark. And this lady is busy asking herself, Come on, is that how it's happening in your own relationship? Because I don't understand these guys. So guys are very funny. Before we started going out, he used to call me for 30 minutes. But now I don't I can't understand why it's only two or three minutes. Let me tell you something. Most ladies love the euphoria and the excitement. You took her to Mr. Biggs every week. You ensured that money came out, faith was working. Every koinonia message of faith produced for you. You forced it to work. There was one one thousand every week here marked for maintaining this process. But now that it has happened, you have suddenly gassed out that energy is not there. One day the lady just tries and says, ah, How about that chicken? Have you eaten Mr. Big Chicken for a while? Say, oh, please don't we are trying to conserve resources right here. As if you didn't know it before. So the, the issue of emotional obsession. Listen, this is why many relationships, this is why Western people cannot stay three days or one week. Are you following me now? As quickly as they enter, they pack their loads and go. The reason is because the only factor was emotional obsession. So the guy entered and you saw this posh guy. Eh? He was, he was a Lamborghini that dropped him. Ladies, don't pretend like what I'm saying is not making sense. The guy just comes out and now you are just looking. What they call it? Tall, dark and handsome. Very nice guy. And now you are looking, pinching your friend. Immediately the guy says, can he come for Before he finishes, he says, oh, my pleasure. Two weeks later, I hate this guy. Guys are wicked. I hate them. Calm down. This night we are going to explain what is really wrong. What's the problem? Everybody say emotional obsession. Emotional obsession is good. But there is a level. If you allow that to govern your relationship. Or to show whether your relationship is working or not. You are going to get into trouble. Ask any married man. A time comes where what is fueling them is commitment. It's, it's not just emotional obsession. I saw my father annoy my mother in a way that I knew if he was my mother, that would be it. I will call a pastor and say, we need your attention in this family. Yet my mother will go and cook. The, the, the insult has not finished. Oh. The whole bag bag is still on. And she'll be serving him. When she finishes, she'll sit down to continue the argument. Ah, that, that, that cannot be obsession. Hallelujah. What's your son's name? Ah, give us an English name. Okay, Elijah. Let's assume you are Mr. Elijah. Now you finish cheering yourself, cheering yourself, cheering yourself. And people see her and say, ah, this is Elijah. Say, how are you? How is your husband? Fine. Yet, you have not finished. So, you are going back. Let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, many people, especially unbelievers, have based their relationship on that tingly feeling, that feeling of obsession. He's the only person in your world. She's the only person in your world. Hallelujah. You have exams tomorrow. By three, you are still together. The exam is by eight. You know you will pass. The lady says, please, I care about you. It's academics. What? Eh? I, I, I can make it. I've been making it in this school. I've been making it. Don't spoil this atmosphere. Right? I, I, it will work. Just don't worry. God is faithful. It's like fire. You can't help it. You can't explain it. 
Hallelujah. And then for many people, when they get into the relationship or they get married, after a while, there are many names that the guy used to call you. He found Greek and Hebrew names just for you. Shining star. What again? What are the names? Ladies, tell me the names the guys call you. Oh, yeah. What? Princess. Every lady's name is princess and angel. They like it. My name is Angel. My name is Princess. So the guys call all of those names. They are, they are ways of trying to manage that fire at the moment. The time you just call and say, Ella, it's time for fellowship. Oh, let's go. She said, ah, what is wrong? Say, please, is he your name or not your name? Did your father give you the name? And now Ella is beginning to be worried. Is it that this guy doesn't love me again? Hallelujah. Please, are you following me now? Emotional obsession is good, but relationship cannot be sustained just from the emotional realm. Are you listening to me? Many people believe you get your relationship by that tingly feeling and you feel, the more I keep feeling so obsessed. That's what happens to white men. Two weeks after their relationship, they find out that that fire, that fervency is not there. And they just say, we are not meant for each other. Now they go to look for another person. So, they are allowing that obsession. And this is the problem that some of you have. You are, you are allowing your emotional obsession to be the governing factor. It's like a thermometer. That helps you to know whether your relationship or your marriage is working or not. If that's what you are using, Satan will deceive you big time. Are you listening to me? So, have you understood emotional obsession now? Commitment. Everybody write. Commitment. Okay, leave yourselves again. Look up. This is a very dangerous word. Commitment. Everybody say commitment. Commitment is not a very nice word if you understand all that it entails. Let me tell you the truth. Commitment. Many people run away from this word called commitment. Hallelujah. There are many guys today and many ladies today who the reason why they are not in relationships is because they are afraid of commitment. You know what commitment is? Commitment entails sacrifice. Many guys and ladies alike are not willing to pay that sacrifice of commitment. Don't let anybody fool you. Genuine relationship takes sacrifice. You will forgo a lot of things. Some relationships and marriages will even change you. It will change you. Ask our mothers and they will tell you. Any woman who is married here will agree with me. It will change you. I remember years ago, two of our, our members got married. And one time we went for somebody else's wedding. And the lady who got married is a very playful lady. She likes jumping. She can jump up and down and play. Hallelujah. Now she was married. And then she saw some of our other sisters who were not married. They were jumping and playing and you could see it pushing her. I mean, she wanted to join. I saw the way it was eating her up, but no way. There was a ring in her hand that was telling her, behave. Behave. Everybody say commitment entails sacrifice. Many people do not want to pay that sacrifice. To maintain your relationship to maintain your marriage it's what is very difficult for many people commitment entails contentment everybody say contentment that's the reason why a man can marry a woman can marry there are men and women today who do not know what they want 10 years after marriage 
they are still looking around and changing they lack contentment everybody say contentment you know what contentment is contentment is getting to a point where you derive fulfillment and satisfaction a lamborghini is good a porsche Cheyenne is good hallelujah what other car again tell me one more don't mention anything you are not sure of a bentley is good but you see you can have your crv and be contented are you listening to me contentment is very important the bible says proverbs 31 31 it says many daughters have done excellently but thou excellest them all many people like contentment they lack it in life that's why nothing can be enough there are people in life you can never please they they always want more they are never satisfied hallelujah this is the problem with many relationships there are many relationships that are not contented and let me tell you something if you find yourself talking to the guy or the lady many people like comparing relationships it's a terrible thing never do that hold our hands again two of you are going out say elijah you used to wear nice suits before why this one that you are looking like you have been embarrassing me oh it has been paining me today i'm saying it hallelujah and then suddenly who is with suit again sam stand up now she's already been dissatisfied with elijah why because he didn't used to wear the suit she used to know him to wear before do you know that if you do not have contentment little things can take away your passion is somebody hearing what i'm saying suddenly sam is coming with his suit elijah you're in trouble Look, there's fire on the mountain elijah doesn't know elijah doesn't know why her commitment is not she's already seen sam see sam's shirt two colors In her heart, she has met Sam already. Oh. Elijah is there smiling. This is how many people are. Listen, listen, listen. This is very important. In life, can I tell you something? Brothers, get it straight. Even if you get the best lady you believe right now, you will see somebody better than her one day. By every standard, true or false. Sisters, you will see Prince Charming in Koinonia. And may God help you go somewhere. Hey, you will see Prince Charming plus. You will see another Prince Charming that will make you not to sleep. Many of us have this craving that cannot say enough. Not just for relationship. You have a car. You have your small golf. You are starting small. The day you see somebody's Benz. It's as if you should squeeze your golf and just throw it away. They say, whose car is this? They say, eh, please, what is your business? Can't you see things and leave it? To come and say, this is my golf. I bought it. It's a fruit of hard work. 500,000 with faith on top is what brought me this golf. One day, I would, I would turn this golf into a, a Bentley. But for now, this is golf. This is what many of us, many of us, many of us, you are in a relationship. God bless you, Sam. The lady cannot speak English very well. You too, you came from the village. So it was not a big deal. You just connected. Suddenly you found out that your CGPA was doing well. And you had a brother who stayed in UK as your roommate. And eventually metamorphosis, orientation. Your, your, your village English is being changed and polished. And now you can speak Queen's English. You, you can speak all the oral English and everything. Hallelujah. Suddenly you start looking at the lady. And in your mind you are like, ah, God. I don't know how to manage this thing now. Our levels have changed. Hallelujah. Now you don't know how to tell this sister and say, Tor, we came from the same village. Yes. As at the time I met you, two of us were managing in the same realm. But maybe you gave me scholarship. I went to UK for three months. 
or for PhD or this and now I'm back from UK so I can't relate with you again nonsense hallelujah I was told that the, what was the name of that Nigerian lady who got Miss World? The guy who was going out with her. The moment she qualified for international this the guy just left. He just knew that there's, there's no point wasting time. This is how many of us are. You lack contentment. You can never say enough. You just turn and you see another lady with nice with one. Sister, please stand up. You. Uh-huh. See her beautiful Yvonne. And you just look. Suddenly you look at her like, you, you don't do Yvonne, eh? eh? It's dangerous. Because many people think marriage will solve that problem. I assure you it won't solve it. That's why you can see a man in a car. When he's with maybe his daughter's friend. He's smiling. How are you? Where is your father? But when he's with his wife, you will know. What of the, the fuel? Did they bring it? He's driving, you know. She's saying, yes. She's turning her face. Commitment. Everybody say commitment. Number three, commitment entails patience. Patience. One of the greatest shocker for people in relationship is that when they enter, they suddenly find out that all you saw in the guy or the lady is not all there is. It's a root shock. Hallelujah. Commitment entails tolerance. Many of you are not tolerant at all. Look up, please. Now, let me say something. Many people enter relationship with their idea of what it should look like hallelujah some of you have been so battered by the complex you grew up with that your relationship is a revenge mission you didn't tell the guy but you have been so psychologically whipped that you have sworn to yourself that this guy is that donkey that jesus used to ride he said brother are you willing you kept asking the guy do you truly love me the guy didn't understand i said yes you truly love yes the brother didn't wait. He said, okay, let's do. After one month, nobody tells the brother, the guy is dying. His pocket money has finished. Savings finished. He has sold his laptop. He sold his Blackberry. His other shoe, he has sold it. In your mind, you are saying, you've not seen anything, no? You better keep selling. I went through a lot of pain. We didn't eat meat in our house. I'm revenging. So, you better... There are many ladies that your concept of relationship is a revenge. All the things you've gone through, all the names they called you, you will ride on that brother until he knows that he asks you out. And you believe that your beauty is a consolation for all this pain. One day like a donkey, the brother will just die. The brother will say, this thing I'm not doing again. Hallelujah. It gets bad when your family joins in the ride. The mother says, let's ride. Oh. You said the guy is purpose driven. Oh yeah. Ask him to send some money. You have not married the girl. Yet they said there's one contribution they are doing somewhere. Ah. The brother is saying, do they know me? He says, shall I bring it? How much? 15,000, 5,000 my own transport. The guy now goes to ask Pastor Jakes and say, if somebody is in a relationship, and the family is already asking him to bring money. Is he right? There are many people. Listen, listen, please. That's why it's good to think well, though. It's good to think well. There are some families that are suffering. They are crying for a savior. If you are coming to be that savior, hear God first. Hear God first. There are families that things are not working well. I tell you, things are not working well. They need a man 
to help them you you just came i'm that man the mother looked at you the day you came can you carry it before they finish say yes you carry now you are dying the load is killing you you know we counsel people so we know the things that we hear hallelujah ladies relationship is not a revenge mission please don't say i've been feeling calm I've, I've suffered inferiority complex now this guy the guy wants to spend 10 minutes with god you're already angry the bible says whatever god has joined what is all that must he go with you you came late for a program he's sitting in front you are frowning why didn't he sit with me ah, ah. this is insecurity hallelujah and many of you do not know there are there are there are there are people who when they are in a relationship like this especially certain guys suddenly when you see ella just whisper something to jakes you are not talking to her again no? what did you tell jakes what did you tell him that you couldn't tell me and the lady said no 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 look at your bible says the bible study what i've been watching you that's how you told this guy the other day you said this and that and that and then same with ladies a sister comes to ask somebody who has been helping her before you even came and now the brother just calls her corners her gives her one thousand the lady she will do as if all oh, ladies can see they will pretend they didn't see it even if they didn't see their friends oh yeah yeah see immediately you see the turn. Is during their regular regular what meeting the issue will come up say in this relationship we are not honest with one another the brother will say really say we are not honest god knows there's no honesty in this thing when people are giving people money how can there be honesty who are the people who are the other people they gave we don't know say me i won't talk again i don't want trouble you have already spoken the trouble is there already hmm. hallelujah commitment entails responsibility listen look at me there are many people that love koinonia you love koinonia but the moment they say um why don't you join a department once you hear anything that will commit you you are finding your way there is a beautiful dinner coming up next week you are smiling the price is aha uh -huh, commitment anything there are people who especially guys brother if you are still afraid of commitment don't ever if you are seeing any lady in your dream stop it stop it stop seeing her because you are only playing there are many brothers here they, they are not committed have you seen people like that there's nothing that is worth their time and their attention they want to be average in everything small here small here so long as it doesn't commit me hallelujah you say i'm in prayer department but you say what what kind of members are in prayer department are there me i'll just be coming when i want to i hope you are not offended why wouldn't you be committed everybody wants things that you say i'm in welfare but the thing is that the nature of my life is that there are times when i may not be around let me tell you there is nothing good that happens in life without commitment is that correct you are seeing the worship people standing this is commitment it's not like they don't know how to sit many of you you run away from anything that will bring responsibility hallelujah you are in a relationship with the lady one day she just says sorry oh please don't think i'm materialistic i've not spoken with my mother for a while can you help me with five aha uh aha -huh. uh -huh. she has not mentioned aha uh -huh. see you joshua selman said people should not be disturbing us you are the kind of abba 
500 naira for recharge card. Greedy and stingy people hate commitment because it will require them to give out something. Greedy people. That's why they don't have many friends. They don't like anything. Don't come and say, we're having a get together. Everybody bring money. Uh -uh. Or bring as the spirit leads. They don't like that kind of thing. Commitment. Listen. Every marriage I know of that has worked did not just work because of emotions. Are you listening to me? We are going to be very practical today. Have you seen a man and his wife? A man who has accident, for instance, in the course of their marriage and he's now confided on wheelchair and the wife is still standing and they are celebrating their anniversary together and the wife is saying, if God gives us another life, I will marry you. My brother, my sister, this cannot be emotion. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It, it cannot be emotion. The day the guy fought with somebody, they blew his eyes. Suddenly you came and saw somebody with one dark eye. Your friend, he was coming, you just turn and tell your friends, ah, please, let me, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to run somewhere. You are a child, you, have not, you are not ready for marriage. Is this kind of secondary school thing people do? Hallelujah. Many of you feel embarrassed at just any little thing. Rain beats the guy. He just entered somewhere and he's smiling. They're like, ah, this guy is falling my hand. You better, you better stop it. He's taking you out. All the money he has is what can sponsor two of you. The remaining change is 100 or 200. I say, let's enter bus. And now while you are entering, you see other people in their relationship. The guy just turned, just does hunt for you. Out of a sincere heart to just say hello, the lady is just getting uncomfortable in the bus. Ah, sweet, I was wrong, please. You are already embarrassed. You want the guy to go and steal. So that he will make you happy. Many ladies have led our brothers into unbelievable things because they think they want to protect their image. That's why many ladies want guys that they can control. Some of you even say it proudly. You better repent this night. Did you hear what I said? Change! Repent. Say, I like a guy. My own guy. Everybody will sit down. Everybody is talking about their own. My own guy, yo. I can flash him now, now. And he will flash me back. If I tell him I'm not happy right now, it's 15 text messages I'll get before I sleep. And if you dare me, I will do it. You are using the guy like a caricature and you are smiling. God is watching. God will pick him and give somebody who deserves him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I assure you. Stop it. Your relationship is not a revenge mission. Yes, we know you suffered growing up. Manage your, your, your predicaments. That's why you receive the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody say, I receive grace to be committed. I receive grace to be committed. Because there are many of you, the kind of man or woman you are looking for has not yet been born. With the, the, the attitude you have, I assure you, the person has not been born. hallelujah you are not willing to sacrifice anything you are not willing to be patient you are not willing to build most of us want ready-made relationships ready-made unfortunately there's nothing called ready-made relationship you can look at her and like her you've not seen her when she's angry you've not seen her when she's broke You've not seen her when she's under pressure. You too, you have not seen him. He's wearing nice suits now. You don't know what happens when his CGA PS nose diving. You don't know what he can become. That's why you need God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, let me tell you something. This is why 
I personally believe that campus relationship is one of the best kinds of relationship. You know why? Because at that point, you see the brother when he wakes up, you see his drowsy eyes. There's nothing that is hidden. He can't lie for long. You've seen the shoe. You followed him to the shoemaker to help and patch it. So you know that this guy doesn't have much. You were the one who helped him to bargain the, the 500 naira material. You begged the tailor to sew it for him. So your love is genuine because it's not tied to anything. That's why many people, many people who already become blessed and wealthy hardly make good marital decisions. Which lady will not want a guy who, let me tell you something. Some people, have, some ladies have suffered who talk about it. Once you enter 300 level, your mother calls you, Ella, come here. Say, come and sit here. Come now, Ella. Say, Ella, what did we eat day before yesterday? Beans. What did we eat yesterday? Beans. What did we eat today? I didn't have the opportunity to enjoy what you can enjoy. What I'm trying to say is this. A rich man is better than a poor man. Leave all those campus promising brothers. Look at Nigeria. No jobs. What is the guarantee? When do you want to marry? Say next year. Say find somebody that looks like next year. Don't find somebody that doesn't look like it's not like I'm telling you not to choose or I wouldn't choose for when they're already choosing for you. Hallelujah. Are you learning something this night? So, Ella now comes and begins to scout one promising, serious brother in decoration. You are serving, labor in the house of God. But all you have is the promise of God. No manifestation yet. You just come to Ella and say, um, Ella, I uh, <laughs> they don't even think about it. Oh. I know where you are going. Let me help you get there. You are wasting your time oh, because of what the mother has already told her. So she's scouting around looking for this pushed military officer in, in Jaji or army officer or director in bank. And every time she enters UBA, she's just smiling at the staff because you want to please your mother. And then, 10 years later, you have not married. And then you come and see that brother that you used to see his shoe when he's praying in Koinonia because he doesn't want it to tear, he will remove it and keep it. But he's praying. He's fasting. Later, you see the guy drop from his car and look and say, Ah, I know you now. And you're like, Yes, sir, I know you too. I know you. I know you. I know where I met you, sir. Say, sir, have you married? He said, ah, this is my little junior. Come. You are, you are in for it this night, oh. Brothers, appreciate me if I'm helping you. Mm. Hallelujah. We're still talking about commitment. Many people run away from commitment. Many people. We hate commitments. In the house of God, commitment to your friends, commitment to your family, commitment to your work. Say, I receive grace to be committed. Hallelujah. Please celebrate them. Hallelujah. emotional obsession is not enough i hope you've learned that now because there are some of you who are wondering is my relationship is in nose diving but then you will find out that this tingly emotional feeling is not all there is to relationship you will grow up and you will begin to take the burden of love the burden of responsibility hallelujah you take last your father will whip you Yet you go to the bank to withdraw school fees. He will talk and say, Me, may God punish me if I pay your school fees. 
but before resumption he brings the receipt where are you come if you like go back to school yet he said may god punish him he has said even for god the burden of love hallelujah very important so how many of you are learning something now the third thing i want you to know about maintaining relationships we spoke about emotional obsession that as good as it is it's not enough number two commitment we spoke about commitment your commitment must be beyond your emotions to sustain any marriage must be far beyond a determination number three communication and this is where we will dwell seriously today everybody say communication hallelujah how many of you have read the book five love languages let me see your hands how many of you have read any book on relationship and marriage aside from married people you see what we are saying look at me what you do not place value for you will not excel in. are you listening to me whatever you do not whatever you do not respect leaves you whatever you appreciate comes to you so i'll take an extra from five love languages when it comes to communication hallelujah please look up hold on gary chapman in his years of research about marriage and relationship why homes work and why homes do not work came up with what he called five love languages look up please now a love language talks of a a means of communication are you listening to me the way and manner to which people want love expressed to them so that they can feel its effect are you listening to me i can love you eh? are you following me i can love you but until you are convinced that means i must find ways of relating that love in a way that it relates to your realm is that correct are you following me and this is what gary chapman called love languages in his research he found out that many relationships were broken and many homes were broken because the couple or the spouses did not know how to communicate love to one another are you following me now and so he found out in his years and decades of counseling that honestly many couples that were fighting in homes actually loved themselves but what they lacked was the art of communicating the love are you following me now to one another in a way that they will interpret it as love now um come my dear i was looking for a lady with this kind of hair come Now, if I look at this lady, are you listening to me? And I look at her and I say, ah, see your multicolored hair. Do you know, I may say it as a means of expressing that I like it, correct? But she can receive it as an insult. Have I communicated love to her? But do I love her? Are you, are you getting me now? So, I come and say, see your multicolored hair. This is supposed, in my own thinking, this is a beautiful compliment when i expected a hug where's your hand what is a slap if you don't like the hair tell me to change it don't insult me like that bless you five love languages number one he found out that now all of these love languages are applicable to everybody but there is what we call the primary love language the primary love language is the best and most effective means that an individual interprets receives the feeling of love are you following me now number one words of affirmation whether you've read the book write it 
Gary Chapman found out that there were many men that what they wanted was words or men and women words of affirmation I will explain them very quickly number two acts of service acts of service from the acts of the apostles acts of service media if you can help us words of affirmation that's number one love language number two acts of service number three receiving gifts receiving gifts am i too fast number four quality time quality time and number five physical touch start it start that one start it and follow me number one words of affirmation number two acts of service number three receiving gifts number four what quality time five physical touch look up please gary chapman in his in his in his research found out that almost every human being had one of these as his primary or her primary love language what is word uh, word of affirmation this is mostly strong for men look up please for many men words of affirmation is their primary love language two people again oh yeah now you and somebody sweetheart come don't be afraid don't worry bless you stand here you stand here words of affirmation listen men are visionary men are purpose driven are you listening to me so words of i'm sorry words of affirmation is that assuming this is a husband and a wife and she's telling him she's saying look sweetheart i know that our finances is not in the best position right now but do you know that the man that i met is more visionary than the man that i'm seeing now this guy is broke you are suffering there's no food at home but now he's depressed words of affirmation you are telling him look like you always used to tell us we are coming out of this do you still believe it i believe in you remember when you said god told you that this ministry will blossom the guy just nods what are you doing you are speaking his primary language of love you are affirming are you following me now it's an affirmation you are letting him know that i believe in you and i'm not letting circumstances dictate it food may not be in the house but i'm ready to stand by you words of affirmation and suddenly this guy looks and he says look even if we come back in another planet you is you that i'll marry again that's why you see some guys go through hell and high water as soon as they come out they marry the girl that was there for them straight even if she was a villager because as far as they are concerned that was the person who was able to speak their love language hallelujah rain wash jordan bookstore for instance and everybody's just sending texts oh god jordan god help you and then one sister comes and says jordan how can i help look something like this happened to my brother and so i can understand ha! jordan won't sleep jordan won't sleep jordan will just smile i didn't know you will answer me this way i didn't know you will answer me this way she just spoke his love language everybody say words of affirmation very few ladies have words of affirmation as their primary love language but they do number two acts of service there are many people that are obsessed about receiving a helping hand especially ladies hallelujah so this lady is is, is walking in the kitchen eh? put your hands here you are walking in the kitchen you are washing plates now you put the other hand you wash plates with one hand that's right now she's she's washing plates 
and then this guy how many of you know this kind of big cd in our house that you just thought something and then your father is just listening to his reggae remembering his days and the mother is just sweating and angry in the kitchen first she starts singing hymns the song is playing loud but she's singing what a friend we have in jesus she's angry your father doesn't know because her primary love language may be acts of service martha in the bible had her primary love language as the act of service that's why she was angry when mary left her just walking and at a point she couldn't hide it she came to jesus and jesus said martha martha jesus wasn't the thing he said martha martha you are worried and obsessed about many things there are people who are obsessed about receiving a helping hand i've seen people like that guys and ladies so now you come and meet her and you say um can i help you can i help you wash the plate she says no honestly she will tell you no but her satisfaction is that you were able to speak her love language that you came to show her a helping hand are you following me now very important a lady can be holding a book you say let me help you she will still give you the book you'll be wondering now wow what kind of arrogant lady she may not be arrogant it's her primary love language are you following me now that's why there can be a beehive of guys around her but it's the person who can speak her love language the race is not to the swift oh the battle is not to the strong somebody is buying mr biggs buy mr biggs she will carry the mr biggs and be sharing it with the brother that is doing acts of service for her you say somebody was generous to me one brother brought mr Biggs. can we eat together we've been working together she got a room off k the guy came to help her humble they were sweeping together ah, ah. later she will stop and be looking ah she's seen her husband the other guy is just sending mr Biggs. She will call that guy and say, Kai, I was sweeping my room today. The guy said, Really? That means you're hungry. Say, eh, Well, it not immediately it comes. They will share it with her real husband. That's why some of you guys have been suffering because you don't know the road to the city. Number three, receiving gifts. Now look up, please. This is very important. There are many people who are obsessed about receiving gifts, especially ladies. It's not materialism, it's their love language. Hallelujah. How many of you have seen ladies every time you are traveling say, What will you get for me? I tell you, that's a big sign that receiving gifts is their love, is their primary love language. And truly, you would think they are playing. You will carry your big mouth and say, I will buy chicken. I will. You think they will forget. When you come, they are looking at many things. They are just looking at what looks like chicken around your hand. You didn't bring it. You find out that they are suddenly edgy. They are angry. They are not cooperating. What happened? Hallelujah. They love it. They love gifts. It's not about the cost. Even if it's one sweet. You just say, guess what? What's your name? Regina, beautiful name. Regina, I just bought one eckless, eckless, or Tom Tom, Tom Tom self. She doesn't have Qatar. But she say, really? Ha ha. Kai, that was so touching. Five naira. Five naira. But that's her love language. That's the guy's love language. There are guys like that. There are men of God like that. Their love language is you must come with something. If not, the anointing will not be stirred up. must receive something number four let's run quality time aha quality time hold on now husband and wife now quality time is so important hallelujah businessmen pilots soldiers oil company workers pastors listen accountants students time and this is not just ladies 
there are guys that one time like ladies so there are people this is their primary love language now this guy is offshore two weeks two weeks is drilling oil for nigeria you are drilling oil you are drilling oil this lady is there once they spend one day they don't see you that time their body starts they are obsessed about time there are ladies like that the guy says um i'll come and see you in two hours even if it's accident that happened and he got even if it's accident he's bringing the trouser that tore say see i brought this to explain you see i, I changed trouser she said I'm, I'm not hearing anything no you're on your own because the way you have been behaving this relationship tear the guy up and down the guy has to prepare a special atmosphere that will repay what would have happened and now says I just wanted you to know that I'm at the dam now. I'm waiting for you. Say, eh, eh, which part of the dam? Aha. Uh -huh. Attention. Time. With who? No, I'm alone. I'm alone. Alone and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Say, me, I want to sleep now. And the guy said, Have I did all this for you? So, yeah, I'm coming. She would drop it and start smiling. Start doing all her foundation. Put everything. Do everything. You are on your way running. And then when you get there, you are happy because he's speaking your love language. Physical touch. I said you should start it too. The reason is because, please look up. And I must say this, we are Christians. The emotional nature, please listen. I say this all the time. I know there are some of you who just frown and say, please, Jerry, all these people you are trying to many of these books you read you see in america a guy can go out with this lady and be having a french kiss with her christians they love god in the presence of her parents and they'll be happy oh dear they'll be remembering their own but the problem is because of the please listen this is important the context of our culture are you listening to me and the effect because we are emotional beings by the time there are many ladies that are obsessed and guys too their primary love language is touch now when i talk of touch i'm not talking of immorality they are not bad honestly they are not corrupt are you following me now they like hugging this is a hugging generation there are times that we are counseling ladies and as soon as they come you see bishop do it sometimes here or jakes when they come they are trying to fight their tears and what happens the love language of a touch if your mind is not if your mind has a problem with it please just come for counseling because the bible says to the pure all things are pure there are some of you that anything in your mind say how can a guy stand yet please i beg please let's let's learn first hallelujah are you listening to me very important now of course i'm not saying in a relationship you have to say see you minimum distance this is how we are no but but listen you must be careful look up please are you learning are we christians here yeah? are we christians please everything we are saying is within the jurisdiction of the kingdom i don't know what you have learned from nigerian films but we are christians this is a lady you are physically attracted to. Is that true? Please answer me. Is that true? Now, ah, see, we are human beings. So you are a man, no, oh, you are a woman, no. Oh. Be careful. Hallelujah. By the time you start doing some funny things, like saying, okay, you want to lap this lady, even if a Bible is in front of two of you, and you are doing Bible study, there's trouble. It may not happen that day, but be sure you're on the way to destruction. I know what I'm saying will offend some of you. It doesn't make sense, but let me tell you, help yourself. Praise God. What did I say? Help yourself. So, try to minimize, minimize, minimize the love language of touch. When you are married, back your wife and go out with her. That's your, back her. 
Go out with her. That's your cup of tea. Let everybody know that two of you, your love language is touch. At least you are married. But that you are single. And then some things, you and the person may know you are pure. But you see, the report before men, especially if you are a leader. Are you, are you following me? Very important. There are some things you do. They may not be wrong in themselves. But the effect, the message it can pass to other people is what is very dangerous. And you must have that staying power to help yourself. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? So if your love language is a touch, please receive grace from God. And understand that it will be minimized. Until marriage. Hallelujah. When you get married again, such there's no law. Sleep with yourself from morning till night. Back, back, you, that's your cup of tea. Do whatever you want to do. But for now, that you are not married, help yourself so that you will marry willingly, happily, and honorably. Hallelujah. So that they won't force you and say, Okay, you have demonstrated to us your willingness to marry in two weeks. Therefore, prepare and do everything. Please, avoid such kind of things. Because it will make you to hate the person that you are supposed to spend the rest of your life with. Is somebody hearing this? So, if you have been in a relationship or if you are married, that's okay. You are exempted from all this. But if you are in a relationship, there are some of you that do funny things. You just stand. I, I saw one guy around social center and it was I can't even begin to describe what I saw around that place where they park and I know that lady I'm sure she's a Christian lady Kai it was too extreme eh? whether your love language whatever your love is too extreme please Christians are we together you're angry Abby I will say it I'm not going to stop it it's too much you are doing as if they will steal the woman. Be careful. If you can't, whatever is pursuing you, go and meet her parents. Ah. It's too much. Some things believers do around. I know some of you will not be. It's too bad. Guys come to ladies' hostel or come. It's, it's, too, it's too intimate. It's too expressive. See, you may not go to hell. But you are certainly not going to live a fruitful life because that thing is leading you into trouble. I'm telling you this. Take what I'm saying very seriously. Do you know when your touch for a lady becomes excessive, she starts feeding and getting sheep before you. Are you listening to me? There is no, no expectancy again. Ladies, there are some of you. Anybody can touch you anywhere, anyhow, anytime you don't mind you are just smiling sheepishly guys will keep changing you and you are just around social center you are around anywhere you just run 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 climb the guy's back and you are laughing he will drop you the other one will carry you what kind of wife do you want to become open your eyes open your ears then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Would you open your ears? And then you'll understand that the Lord is here. You do that. You just enter a relationship. Before you know it, you are. Ah, come on, no. And brothers, there are some of you that are shameless. May God grant you grace to be disciplined in Jesus' name. Say amen. Some of you behave as if you are not Christians. You are not the first to enter a relationship. You will not be the last. People have held themselves for years. Oh God, what is pursuing you? Behave yourself. You are just around the lady as if you are as if he's a fly. And anybody, hey, they don't know what do you want? Abba. And 
there are ladies look at me sisters i'm talking to you now because there are many guys here that got into certain things because of the pressure that the ladies mount many ladies your love language is physical touch be careful what did i say what did i say oh manage yourself i know that biologically speaking there are many biological and psychological reasons as to why ladies will want touch as their primary love language but let me tell you this is why the spirit of god comes are you hearing me you are not an unbeliever you are a christian it is because of physical touch that many people have gotten into pornography hear me please masturbation homosexualism are you following me now lesbianism i will say it all internet pornography and you have done many unthinkable things because of the vulnerability of the human body to the touch this is why you must be careful i'm warning you now be careful i'm speaking to you see my heart and see the love i'm a human being too but i'm telling you be careful so that you will get married happily and honorably praise the lord is that possible is that possible for a christian yes how do you make that possible discuss it see when you enter a relationship the boundaries you don't discuss you will cross discuss it tell him oh, me honestly the way i am see i once counseled a lady years ago listen i found out that this lady was so obsessed about physical touch and i knew she was a christian and she loved god and it was it was getting too, ah, it was too much she can want to hug you and fly on you you know how superman does as in fly on mercilessly as in this kind loosely and carelessly you know that this one has crossed the boundary by far and i found out that ah, what is there must be something wrong and then i got to find out that she had a medical condition of hormonal imbalance are you following me now this was what was response she did it she had an unusual craving for touch and we had to put this lady under careful surveillance so that we gather against wolves in sheep's <laughs> clothing because there are some let me tell you the church has all kinds of brothers so sometimes that's why you see us guard our sisters sometimes when we see you coming around and you are being too careless we'll tell you behave please we are watching behave behave hallelujah bless you bless you sir everybody said five love languages how do you know your partner's love language by their consistent complaints right their consistent complaint is a sign that you are not responding to their love language you said every time you travel you don't used to think about me every time you travel that's how you leave me alone even a flash aha quality time she's speaking her love language to you if you are smart get it note it and start responding hallelujah praise god very important look at me when you see a lady start talking about can we go to church together can we sit together can we they say high five your neighbor she's looking at you and hoping you look at her back you will high five somebody else you will explain it sooner or later she won't forget it that's that's touch there are you following me or a lady that informs you the day you give her this thing she informs you about the date of her next birthday right away so that you start preparing ah, that's that's receiving gifts there brothers have you been sensitive ladies have you been sensitive you see this guy walking all the time he tells you i have a building project i've been trying to build you just land and look at him and say you didn't even see my reform what of words of affirmation why don't you speak his love language that's why you can see a guy will look at the girl and say you are a selfish lady or a guy will look at a visionary brother and say you are very selfish 
the guy's hand is like this aha receiving gifts this is not quality time if you see ladies and this guy his hand is like this like his big head his hand is like that receiving gifts hallelujah let me give you an assignment do it in one minute right now everybody write your love language find it you know it some of you are laughing some of you say all oh, is a lie is a lie no matter what health issue you have you have only one love language don't say yeah me to the doctor said no you have one please find it so that you know it if you are in a relationship this is the week of discussion if you are married discuss this with your spouse say i didn't know that this trouble i've been making in this house is as a result of absence of meeting my love language i'll give you the love language again number one words of affirmation number two acts of service number three receiving gifts number four quality time number five physical touch be honest between you and god write it don't show anybody it's none of your neighbor's business just write it write it and know it know it now so that you stop punishing the bro there are many of you that are always complaining the guy has done everything he knows to do you are saying he doesn't love you he doesn't know what to do again please tell him what your love language is it will help him to relate with you is someone learning something here maintaining relationships many homes are broken down because they do not know this look at me I once counseled a well a young pastor not not really a young pastor and of course I'm not mentioning names of ministries and all of that but I don't know what it was this guy just got married and he was very funny because it looked like all about their lives was ministry this guy can travel and not see the lady for months and I knew where he learned that from the lady was angry hallelujah but she didn't know how some ladies will not talk but is eating them are you listening to me and that situation when I the guy was troubled and then I said okay let me can I talk with the lady I talked to her on phone this lady started crying and say she doesn't even trust the guy again she doesn't even know if the guy is sleeping around i just knew that her love language is quality time and this guy has not spent time with her brothers let me shock you if you don't spend time with a particular lady one day you will come and find your files and everything outside and she has already married another man they've given birth to children you don't know businessmen beware bishop gave us a story of of one man somewhere this guy was a billionaire. He was obsessed about making money. And he will not spend time with his wife. We'll talk about maintaining marriages now. That's where we'll talk of sex, marriage, emotion, spending time, God, and all of this. When, when, when you are not married, we don't have anything to say about sex. If you have been waiting for me to talk about sex, you are wasting your time. Till we start talking about marriage marriage with a ring marriage with a ring praise God say amen if you are getting blessed if this thing is offending you it's a sign that you may need to adjust some things don't get angry are you hearing what I'm saying because honestly many of us are too loose we have allowed a lot of things there are many Christian relationships that they sleep with one another. They are happy. They don't think it's an issue. The brother showed the sister a nice scripture in the Bible. First Corinthians. Twisted the girl's head. I'm telling you now, get it straight. Sex is only, only, only for married people. I don't care what the Western world says. When we talk about marriage here, yeah, I'm going to tell you the spiritual implication of sex. We'll talk about it. You know us here, yeah, we don't have time for any stories to read. We don't teach, we're not teaching you biology. We're teaching you something that will help you in life. And so we'll say it as it is. Many of you think sex is just all about 
pleasure and emotional satisfaction when i show you the spiritual side of sex you will run away from any man who wants to sleep with you who is not your husband are you listening to me god threatened me with that revelation threatened when i had the revelation i just said ah myself behave joshua selman behave in jesus name Okay. Are you learning something right now? Could this be the reason why many of you have entered over 10 relationships and they didn't work? You are blaming any everybody. Could it be that you are the problem now? Are you now seeing? 10 people cannot be wrong. Could it be that the problem is you? Before I round up, we are going to talk about what I call the love and respect principle. Still talking about communication. The love and respect principle. Now, Dr. Emerson, please write it and look up. We finish with Gary Chapman. Dr. Emerson wrote something about love and respect. And he called it the crazy cycle. Everybody say the crazy cycle. Say one more time, the crazy cycle. For the last time, please. Let me have two people again. At least Ella come again. And who? When Ella came out, who came out? Oh, yeah, now. Oh, God, you are doing as if. Come and stand to me. Ella and him. You are married. Or you are going out. Hold your hands. Praise God. What is the crazy circle? This was the example he gave. Listen. Please listen. They are celebrating their 10 years anniversary. Correct? And this guy is busy. So he looks at, you know, this kind of card that you don't you really don't see what they just write maybe something sweet and you know we men when we, we can sometimes we, we are not thorough you just see the card ah, i like it so he bought the card he has been forgetting all the wedding anniversaries and she's hoping he will remember the 10th one are you getting my example so now the guy comes and gives her a surprise hold it honey i bought you this card now ella is smiling smile now don't, don't worry now she's smiling. Finally, she's interpreting this care and attention as what? Love. Is that correct? Then she opens the card only to find out that the guy bought a birthday card mistakenly. Please listen to my story. What did he buy? During an anniversary. Suddenly she looks at it. Bam! She drops it down and says, it was better you didn't buy the card what is she doing listen she has been compromised he, he has failed to interpret love so she feels the only way to know him make it to to make him know it is by being negative and hurting him are you following me now now the guy is angry because he interprets what she has done as disrespect are you following me now and he's saying can you not even appreciate the fact how many men can remember to buy an anniversary card? I bought you an anniversary card. If you talk to me like this again, I will slap you. Why? Now, he too is revenging. Dr. Emerson calls it the crazy cycle. Where a woman responds negatively to communicate her heart. And the man responds negatively too. Fire for fire ends two of you in ashes. Correct? This is the crazy cycle. Do you understand? I told you that ladies desire love, care, attention. Men desire what? Respect. Everybody say respect and honor. So, what the love and respect principle is the principle of communication in relationship and marriage that teaches you how to look beyond the acts of your spouse and see their heart are you following me now then you will be able to understand the craving that led to that activity that was done whether it was done well or not are you following me now so let's let's do it again now he gives her this and then she collects it and opens and it's a birthday gift and she's like wow honey i i want to appreciate you and she laughs and jokingly says, Ogasa, do you know you bought me a birthday gift? Say, talk, but at least you tried. If you remember this, this year, 
Next year you'll be meticulous. Now what happens? She's sad. But she found out that dishonoring him will complicate the issue. Are you following me now? So in that honor, the guy now feels bad because she has honored him. And he will now say, do you know what? We are going out this night. Even the devil will not stop us. I must make this up because she has honored him. Are you following me? We call it the love and respect principle. There are some ladies whose marriages and relationship will never work until they learn this. Look up. Ladies, look up. No matter what enters you, don't ever get so wild and angry that you start insulting a guy and washing him down and giving it to him. Ladies, call it giving it to him. You give it to him. See, I washed him from head and washed. I gave it to him. He knew that I've been watching him. You are laughing. Let me tell you something. No matter how beautiful you are, your beauty will fade like a leaf. The guy will hate you forever. Are you, are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Don't try to embarrass a guy. You went to Suya joint. Ogagambo is here. You are going to buy Suya. And of course, the guy wants to behave. So he will say, um, you know, Ella, just speak for us. A wise lady will honor him back. You don't want to disgrace him. You know, based on your relationship, you can be free to say some things. Even if he's joking, how much oil should I pick? Oh, not you just start laughing and say, hey, Ogaga, how much? 50 naira, how much? 100 naira, how much? 200. You say, put five of this one. And all the guy has is 500. Now, this guy is sweating. He doesn't know what to do. He's looking around if you see any of his friends. You say, do you mind, mommy? I, I eat three. Three will be okay for me. How about you? He say, Ogaga, but just put two more. <laughs> The guy is fidgeting. So his response is, he's just saying, put more. He already knows that this thing is a mess. There's no honor there. Hallelujah. And at the end, the guy suddenly looks at you and says, look, sweetheart, let me just tell you, I came with only 500. Why didn't you tell me? What kind of thing is this? When you are not ready, don't say, did I ask you for it? Did I ask you for it? Please, in fact, I'm even going. The friend will say, no, no, come. And that's how you, you go to the hostel. Let me tell you something. You broke the love and respect principle. You embarrassed the guy there. Washed him there. You were happy. You entered your room boiling. And your roommates had to tell you, calm down. Can you imagine? And you are saying he embarrassed you. You didn't look at his sincere efforts. Are you following me now? Listen. God is speaking to some of you here. You need to change it. You have been breaking the love, respect circle. And there are some of you brothers. You must be careful. Hallelujah. I've said it here. Don't put too much culture inside your relationship. Hallelujah. The lady just comes and says, Hi, how are you, Elijah? And you're like, Ah, Ella. See, look at me. I'm from a royal family, one. Number two, I'm older than you. Something that is supposed to be obvious. Even my sisters kneel down to greet me. See, don't, don't think just because I asked you out to you within all these things. Let me tell you, I can leave this relationship and I will sleep fine. This nonsense the brother is saying now is called breaking the, the, the love respect circle. Are you hearing me? Don't do that. So, when there is love from this side, there is what? The Bible says, Proverbs 24, we're rounding up. Proverbs 24, verse 3. Let's look at it quickly. Proverbs 24, verse 3. From Amplified. Is it possible to get Amplified? Amplified. Please project it. I want you to read it. We're going to pray. The devil is a liar in Jesus' name. That devil that wants to destroy relationships and marriage, we will cast it out this night in the name of Jesus. Everybody say, my marriage must work. Say it, it must work in Jesus' name. Alright, everybody, let's read. One, two, read. Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family built. And by understanding it is established. 
upon a sound and good foundation he said through skillful and godly wisdom is what so if you understand the principles god is speaking there are some of you that god stopped from entering relationships so that you can understand this hallelujah the greatest craving for a lady is the craving to be loved brothers say it after me the greatest craving for a lady is to be loved to be cared for to be protected ladies say after me the greatest desire for a man is to be respected to be honored now just stop playing one minute in what way have you been dishonoring the men around you ladies this is a time for soul searching or rounding up in what way in what way i stop the keyboard playing so that you will listen carefully there are many of us that you need to change your attitude are you following me now you need to what change your attitude i want all the ladies in koinonia to treat the brothers with respect and dignity it doesn't matter if the guy is older than you or you are older than the person treat them well are you listening to me what did i say treat them well don't treat the brothers like rags if you've been doing it stop it because do not be deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man soweth that he will reap one day they will treat you like rags treat the brothers with respect when you see them greet them be smart don't think it is weakness many of you have been taught you think it's being cheap you are being virtuous are you following me you are not being cheap for god's sake you are being virtuous brothers let me never see you shouting insulting embarrassing boiling at any lady you are struggling for seat with her he said all i know is that me except you cut these two legs you can do all your thing you know? i must sit out here and the lady is looking very helpless you are bullying her hallelujah brothers you should protect our sisters for us I've said it here brothers behold your wives sisters behold your husbands it's not a lie huh it's not a lie it will happen it's happening it will keep happening so treat them well the person you may be treating with this day now may be your husband true true treat them well hallelujah don't gauge people and say, Kai, the way this brother is dressed himself now, wow, you don't merit my respect. When you look at the brothers, you look at them, say, mm, this guy babs well, he's nice, he's not pouring saliva at me anyhow, I will respect him. But the brother that is coming, praise and worship, you are just shouting and pouring saliva at me, say, brother, now, wow, about me, kilo shelle, what is wrong? <laughs> are you the only one in Koinonia? Are you the only one who can call upon the name of the Lord? Ladies, lift your hands. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm a virtuous woman. In the name of Jesus, I honor my husband. I respect my husband. In the name of Jesus. And say one more time, in the name of Jesus, I honor all men. And I respect them. Please put down your hands. God bless you. Guys, lift your hands. Lift two of your hands. <laughs> Please do it. Lift two. Of, aside, no, if you are not my... Sir, no. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I'm a caring brother. Say it. I'm a caring brother. I'm a loving brother. What, what else? I'm a what? I'm a... I'm a responsible brother. I'm a visionary brother. Say it again. I care for my wife. I protect her. 
I take her seriously. I pay the price to be committed. In Jesus' name, put down your hands. Yeah. That's very, very good. If you do that, you will find out that you can enter a relationship and I won't promise you a smooth sail, but you see, at every juncture, things can be managed. Is someone learning something tonight? We are going to pray. We have three prayer points tonight. Before we stand up, listen. The first prayer point is you are going to pray for humility. There are some of you that this teaching tonight stung you in a way that you are still angry with me now because it changed your ideologies. There are ladies that believe you are too hot, too attractive to respect any man. Let me tell you now, straight to the point, somebody is better than you. Period. There are some guys that think you are too much of a celebrity. You are a hot cake. Everybody talks about you. You are the guy. Let me announce to you now. Stop dreaming. Stop what? Dreaming. Because there are 3,000 other prophets who have not bowed to Baal. And God can replace any arrogant man and any arrogant lady. Praise the Lord. Some of you, the way you are behaving, you are telling God you don't want to marry because you are not ready to listen to the rules and comply. We are going to pray. Next week, I'm going to, we are going to be discussing. Don't miss next week's meeting. It's going to be a serious, it's going to be war against delay and all of these satanic things. I'm going to be teaching you a lot of spiritual mysteries. You'll be seeing the reason behind delay and all of these things because there are some of you who are standing in for your family members and your loved ones some of you have done all these things that we are saying but things are not working we'll be examining it tomorrow are you ready to pray stand up on your feet bless you now look up how many people did i bring out here where are they four of you huh we are going to give you lunch tomorrow i didn't say you are in a relationship but it's, it's our appreciation four of you Huh? Four of you, you'll go for lunch tomorrow. Hallelujah. Next time when we're giving an example, run and come out. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Listen. You're going to pray and say, Lord, whatever needs to be changed in me, please humble yourself. Whether you are married, whether you are single, whether you are in a relationship or not, humble yourself and cry to God. And say, Lord, there are some things in me. There are some mindsets and ideologies that I've been having. But from this night's teaching, I've seen that I need to change. Lift your voice and cry. Cry to God. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, I repent from pride and arrogance. I repent from having a wrong attitude. A wrong attitude about relationship. A wrong attitude about marriage. Make sure you are praying. But Lord, I hear your voice tonight. Thank you for preparing me. Pray, say Lord, change me, walk on me, make me a woman of virtue. As I am right now, I'm not yet fit to be a woman of virtue. I humble myself, change me. Don't be arrogant tonight. Don't be arrogant tonight. Humble yourself and pray. Say, Lord, I've tried, but you need to work on me. Hallelujah. 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 Now,
please spare yourselves into two. You are going to pray for the brother or the sister you are holding. If you can, if you cannot, no problem. Hallelujah. Listen, second prayer point. You are going to pray. Hallelujah. And you are going to say every mindset that is in that brother or that there are some of us, there are strongholds. Some of us are stubborn. Even after this teaching, you will live angry and you will live offended rather than allowing the teaching to get inside you. Hallelujah. You are going to pray for your neighbor and say, Lord, please break this person. We want excellent wives. We want visionary men. Pray for the person. Lord, walk on my sister. Walk on my brother. In the name of the Lord Jesus, break every pride. Break every wrong mindset. Let our sisters become women of virtue. Women of virtue. Women of virtue. Excellent women. Award winning women. Pray for the brothers. Let our men become responsible. Men of integrity. Men of stature. Men of grace. Pray for her. Say, Lord, let the spirit of respect, let the spirit of honor come upon my sister. Grace to respect men. Grace to respect your husband. Grace to respect your husband. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, you can leave the person. The final prayer point this night. Listen. Listen. We are going to pray for purity in our relationships. Did you hear that? If you've been involved in anything that you know you have crossed boundaries, don't feel bad. We don't condemn you. This is a family. Are you hearing me? This is a family. There is always a new beginning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you're going to make a decision. Make a decision with God. And say, I'm going to keep my relationship pure. If you are married, say, I'm going to keep my marriage pure. No unfaithfulness. No infidelity. Lift your voice and pray. Grace for purity. Please take it serious. Pray. You've been involved in any kind of ungodly lifestyle or practice. Please pray. Say, Lord, I receive grace. Grace. Ladies, pray. And say, no man who is not your husband will see your nakedness. Make a commitment with God. Make a commitment. It is worth it. It is worth it. It may look unusual. But I tell you, it is worth it. It will bring the anointing of God to your life. It will bring the glory of God to your life. It will bring the fire of God to your life. Purity. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Lord, let us have pure relationships. Holy relationships. Pure relationships. Relationships that we will be proud of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We taught on emotional. Don't just let your emotions. Listen. There are many relationships right now and many marriages and homes that are at the verge of breaking. They think it's Satan because that tingly thing is not there. I bring you a word right now. You know that every home is built by commitment. Are you listening to me? Emotions are good, but it's not enough to keep and sustain a home. If you commit yourself when you feel emotionally high, and then retract it when it's down. You are not going to have a stable marriage. Your spouse will annoy you. There are times you will be offended. 
but you must make up your mind that you are committed it's better to leave the relationship for marriage we don't believe in divorce we're going to talk about that next week divorce different things let me tell you something listen look at me i'm saying it honestly listen if you are in this place and you are in a relationship if you know you are not going to be committed please let the brother or let the sister go in peace are you hearing what i'm saying did you hear what i said sisters there is no putting leg one leg here and you are raising the brother's hopes making him feel that he's all in all for you meanwhile the real person you are looking at is in rivers you are just saying whoever among them starts talking about marriage this is ungodly let me tell you i've said it for years we don't believe in double dating double dating is not christian if you feel you have a problem with your relationship there are ministers around hallelujah we have elderly people around that can counsel by the time we talk with you and we see that oh there is a compromise truly we see that based on the compromise this relationship may not work listen as christians if there is need to end relationships we end relationships not break them are you hearing what i'm saying you break relationships and break people's hearts next week we are going to discuss there are people who have started relationships and eventually they saw that okay there is a need this thing may not work well we're going to talk about there are a number of things we're going to talk about next week remember i said we'll talk on health issues family issues you know faith issues and all of these family encumbrances and so on we'll talk about them hallelujah no matter what it is just like you enter the relationship and you came and met bishop stan or pastor jake you say oh i'm in a relationship bless this relationship and pray some of you are in a relationship like secret society nobody knows we don't know no you think let me tell you we are not sadists are you listening to me we are not sadists wicked people who are just waiting and say who told you to go out with that lady no we rejoice when you are in a relationship when you are involved you are in a relationship when the relationship starts undergoing turbulence nobody knows you don't involve the ministers you don't involve people so that will link you with parents and people who can help you counsel now you are facing a situation maybe a health challenge maybe interfaith thing you know all these kinds of we'll talk about them next week maybe there are issues that will honestly not make the relationship work at that point what do you do there are ways to go about it are you following me now so that it is properly managed in to an extent that even when both of you are not together you can be friends there are people who because they did not marry one another all of them have married for 10 years but they cannot look eyeball to eyeball because of what happened this is what we want to avoid hallelujah there's nothing wrong with liking the sister you have heads of department there are ministers in charge let me tell you we are always here to help you i tell you sincerely don't just do things is when everything backfires you come and say bishop this koinonia sisters i don't understand though everybody i'm asking is saying no there is a reason they are not stupid there is a reason why they are telling you no hallelujah praise the lord don't miss next week god will help us you're not born again in this place please listen keep standing you've not made up your mind to give your heart to the lord there is a lot that you cannot do for instance you cannot truly walk in purity and godliness you will find yourself struggling with a lot of things hallelujah you will find out that anything you put your hands to do may not prosper and now i want to give you an opportunity there are many of you who really need the lord jesus christ some of you have given your heart to the lord but right now while i was speaking about relationship the holy spirit was talking to you that the real issue is your salvation please inside and outside inside and outside i'd like you to come out here right now please make sure you don't sit back appreciate them i believe there is somebody at least god is speaking to hallelujah please don't remain in the crowd god is speaking to you you know that you need jesus salvation is a very serious thing inside and outside
this is the greatest miracle hallelujah make sure you don't sit back we'll give you a minute again god is speaking to you you need to make it up with god tonight it doesn't matter what issue i want you to come out they are coming appreciate them i want you to come out don't be afraid don't be ashamed don't think about your friends god bless you my brother god bless you my brother god bless you my sister i see you coming don't be ashamed don't be ashamed it's the beginning of a new day it's the beginning of a new day don't be ashamed at all god brought you here to begin a new journey in your life hallelujah hallelujah thank you so much for your courage to come out say this after me please come come forward sister say after me lord jesus i love you come you can join them quickly my brother say lord jesus i love you i'm a sinner i ask you to forgive me my sins and cleanse me with your precious blood i repent of my old ways from today i begin afresh with you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that i'm a child of god the spirit of god is in me in the name of jesus christ let me pray for you father in the name of jesus i thank you for bringing these ones to the throne of mercy i pray that these decisions that they have made will begin a new powerful journey in their lives in jesus name holy spirit i pray that you help them to stand and to serve you in sincerity and in truth in jesus name i pray amen thank you so much please follow the ushers tomorrow you will meet with pastor jakes they'll give you all the details thank you so much hallelujah praise god now you're worshiping with us for the first time this is your first time worshiping with us please run out here quickly we have a prayer and a blessing for you thank you for coming inside and outside please please come we have a blessing very quickly very quickly very quickly let's save time we're out of time this is your first time please come out quickly just come and stand here you will never be the same thank you thank you for coming thank you we have people who came from mina god bless you thank you thank you keep coming we have a blessing for you hallelujah thank you so much for coming this is koinonia were you blessed tonight hallelujah were you blessed tonight i pray that you will never be the same in jesus name hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you